Hi, this is Dave Edelman with my fourth in a series of videos demystifying AI from the perspective of how executives should be thinking about it strategically. Not just tactical things, but from a broader perspective of how it can reshape the way you compete and the value that you offer your customers. Now, through these videos, I've talked about a lot of different kinds of opportunities from an efficiency standpoint, from a personalization standpoint, from a competitive ecosystem standpoint. And you may be thinking, wow, there's, there's a lot out there. But let's start sharpening our sense of how to prioritize. And I'm going to argue that there are certain baseline things, but then certain bigger rocks to go after. From a prioritization sense, as you look across your business, in almost every function, every area of your business, there are going to be efficiency opportunities. There's going to be efficiencies available in finance, in terms of how you might manage and close the books. In HR, such as the creation of training videos. In factory operations, managing the all of the MRO and the cleaning equipment um, behind everything involved in keeping the factory operating. And you're going to have all kinds of smaller opportunities that are very real, but they're all across your business. Those should be looked at within the context of each of those different departments, providing those departments with some expertise in the center of people who can think about AI-based opportunities, either in-house, people who you have, or consulting support, very lightweight consulting support, but all of those can be done, hopefully, within a department where they can go and start to chase a more narrow tactical opportunity. And learning about those across the different functions, sharing how people are going about it, what their strategies are, there's tons of opportunities to learn. Then there are bigger rocks. The bigger rocks are how do we change the way we compete by dramatically reshaping our cost structure or by changing the customer experience in such a way that one of the biggest frustrations, one of the biggest compromises that customers face, we can eliminate. And let me give you a really good example on this. So client that I have worked with is a distribution company that services all kinds of comp uh, all kinds of providers in building market in the construction market and many times what happens is a contractor is going to call in and say can i get this tomorrow there's a lot of things loaded in that question so a particular branch needs to know do i have it can i get it how much can I get? How much will it cost? What will be the delivery behind that? If I don't have it, can I offer an alternative that is good enough or maybe even better and can explain good, better, best to somebody? Can I understand maybe a bit more about what the customer is looking for and see if I can sell them things also related to that thing that they're asking for and I can widen the order. Can I go back and forth and maybe there's different delivery windows. There's a lot loaded in that, that a rep in a branch who's answering the phone is put in a stressful situation to try to get at. And the information sources are in many different places. But if you can get that right, and answer that customer's question and provide something that the customer can get, you get the sale. The customer over time knows that they can call you because you'll be able to provide it with them. 
and you can own that relationship and build share. That's a critical dynamic in a business like that. That is a very high value opportunity that can reshape the way you compete. So prioritizing situations like that, where you can empower the customer to get a rich answer, empower the rep to win the business, those are the kinds of things to prioritize as a broader organization to go after. And in doing so, you've then got to go one notch down as you prioritize it, because you've got to understand the feasibility. It's worth going after from a value perspective, but how do we start thinking about it from a cost and feasibility perspective? As I've often said in these videos, it starts with data. So thinking about the opportunity, why don't you take three or four different variants of the questions, different kinds of use cases in a similar situation and start laying out what's the data that we need to answer that question? What do we have to bring together? Where is that data? Does that data exist as data or do we have to transform it? So for example, in that data, if we were going to say good, better, best versus something else, that's not data that necessarily just exists. You have to create that. There's analysis you would have to do. There are parameters you'd want to put in that define good, better, best. So you have to understand, can I get that data? Is that something within my four walls? Is it something I have to build an ecosystem with, let's say in this case, manufacturers to put together. How do I, how would I be able to do that? Are there ways to actually use AI itself to create that data? Do I have to buy that data? So understanding how you're going to assemble that data is one of the first and most basic assessment building blocks when you're evaluating something to go after. And you have to figure out whether that data is something you can get. And maybe there are ways of going about um, supporting the customer with less, with a smaller pool of data, but you've got to understand the broadest amount of data that you can have. Then, as you start going through that, you also have to ask yourself, how big a behavior change would this be for the customer, for my rep, in terms of operations, in this case in the warehouse. But for this actual particular example, there actually aren't that many fundamental changes in behavior. There may be changes in the way some of information in the past has gotten loaded into systems and which system the reps use but there isn't a fundamental change. A customer calls and asks a question. Now the rep has to be prepared to go further in how they're answering the question and using whatever AI tool you have. But it isn't a dramatic change in the rep's behavior. In other cases, there may be. There may be a whole set of new things that the rep has to ask the customer. The rep may need to understand that they may not have had to understand before. They may need education in order to do that. So you have to understand how big a change operationally. So you've got the data that you need to assess and then the operations. And then the third part of course is, is there a tool for that? Can we actually provide that intelligence? And as I talked about in the first video, what are the things that you need to do to make that use case happen? Do you need to enhance and integrate data? Well, there are capabilities for that. Do you need to search? Yes, you do. You need to search for whether products are there. Do you need to generate something? Well, you might need to generate what a plan could be or the good, better, best assessment to share with a customer. Is there an action to take? Well, in this case, yes. It could be scheduling a delivery. 
and then all of the invoicing and everything that would go underneath that. Is there an optimization involved in this? Well, as the rep is talking with the customer and seeing what the system is providing, there could be feedback that goes back into the system that helps it learn. In this case, all of those different steps are things that AI can do. There may be tools for each one. That would be very cumbersome to tie together, but it gives you a basis for at least going out there and exploring, are there capabilities that can bring some of those techniques, those capabilities together in one, two, maybe at most three different tools that can work together to handle that breakthrough use case of changing the whole way that we handle sales inquiries. So as you're starting to think about opportunities, think about them on two levels. All of the smaller things that can happen within different functional groups of your company where people can experiment, can try out different tools, create different ways of actually going about things, using those tools to see if they can do it faster or create more variations. But then also step back and think about the big rocks that can move the business. And for those big rocks, what will it take in terms of data, of changes in operations, and AI capabilities to deliver those. Because if you can change the nature of a customer interaction to empower somebody to do something valuable that they could not do before, that could become the thing that pivots in their mind how your brand is using information to drive value to them. And as you learn and get better, it creates more and more of a competitive moat. So again, I would love to hear opportunities that you've pursued of going after really breakthrough use cases of changing the customer experience in such a way to create competitive differentiation. So this was the fourth of my videos. I'll be probably coming back with some more that'll dive into some of these topics more. And I hope you enjoy these. I would love your feedback. I want to share what I'm learning from the work that I do with my clients and from the research that I do. And also from what you tell me about what you're learning and what in these videos is something that's providing, proving to be more useful. So thank you again.